Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Feng Boqun from Huawei. Today, I'd like to talk about uh, recursive read deadlocks and where to find them. This topic is a bit informative and time's limited, so we'll first go through the background and some of the information. I would like to assume that you are all aware of it, and if you have questions, then you're welcome to approach me privately after this session. And then today, I would like to talk about uh, several topics: uh, the locked app and uh, where to find that log and how to assess it, and what I do based on locked app and how can we detect lock that uh, how can we detect that lock first pretty simple that lock let's skip this part and basically if it's involved in the it's it's relevant with deadlock and self deadlock and abba deadlock to the lower right corner uh, what we see here I'm gonna assume that you understand it and both any A and B are in the locked up uh, status, unable to proceed. NBBA can be expanded into uh, a three deadlock sequence, and also it's a, it, there are some deadlocks uh, relevant with interrupts. Uh, so basically, we can assume that an expansion or a scaling of um, ABBA and solve that log and if we're trying to solve a that log then no matter the code if there is that log then uh, we will find a specific combination of codes and the interrupt will increase the possibility of a deadlock code occurrence well if you have a IOB enabled context and you drop the ABBA deadlock then there is a deadlock P0 RQ is enabled and there is a spin lock A and there is a lock handler then they will handle lock B but lock B is locked and in turn there will spin lock A and then there is a deadlock and it will be expanded to a 3 uh, deadlock chain Locked up, what is it? Locked up is a deadlock assessing tools and it's a self equipped tools in the kernel and it's developed around 2000 and uh, it tried to minimize the occurrence of the code in deadlock and they will clarify, uh, they will classify um, different categories of. Uh, that logs and there is a concept of lock dependency to the right you can see p0 if there is a spin lock a and spin lock b then we assume that uh, a to b there is a lock dependence based on the dependence then we will have a dependency graph it's pretty simple pretty straightforward we will see the lock dependency graph is there any uh, ring layout and if the, there is a ring in the lock dependency graph and that will be a bba that lock then this is the code that is likely to appear the lock dependency graph is gonna have this code so this case is a typical that lock case and here I won't go into great details if you're interested 
then you're more than welcome to do more research on the condition of um, deadlock and obviously in all our cases it's all spin lock and in kernel there are, there are some other cases the lock depth are dealing with it like the following well first let's focus on lock depth so two rewrite lock one is recursive rewrite lock unfair rewrite lock and the yellow uh, the yellow arrow is uh, the, where the time progresses W1 writer 1 in red that means they won't get the lock and next we have R2 reader 2 and they get the lock and if it's like this then it's a non common rare lock if we have our writers keep coming then W1 will not get the lock it's unfair and the writer will be very hungry and it's not very good and so all the rewrite lock is fair rewrite lock so these are two cases so the yellow arrow is uh, the t where the time progress forward and R2 won't get the lock and and W1 will have high priority on getting the lock if it's like what's to the right if we don't have the writer then R2 can get the lock so it's a rewrite lock it's different from the previous deadlock when uh, the reader get the lock and if there's any writer there's no other writer than the rest of the reader can also get the lock so there's the difference so we can summarize then this graph saying that the recursive uh, real lock or deadlock they will have multiple uh, readers and they will allow recursive reader to have a, a critical zone and one reader will not block the other readers and for a non-recursive it's rewrite lock and also they will allow multiple readers but they will not allow recursive CS it's called non-recursive obviously and the non-recursive reader will block other reader and they will have a signal this one here you can see the R1 sometimes not are now blocking R2 but sometimes R1 when they get the lock will block R2 when R1 not getting the lock R2 will not get the lock as well so R1 will block R2 with the non-relevant writers so that's what we called one writer can block other writers uh, one reader can block other readers so this is the condition of blocking uh, differentiating uh, different cases different scenarios so spin lock can be considered as the scenarios the only writers exist so if we view this graphic horizontally the recursive reader they will not block any other readers whether it's recursive or not and A recursive reader will not block other readers because it's recursive and it will block writers and the non-recursive no, no, no matter if reader or writer well first uh, from recursive aspects uh, they will not allow CS zone and the writer is a uh, non-recursive lock the non-recursive no matter it's reader or writer they would block other reader and also other writer this is the block condition
And starting from here, this is what we called if we say this rewrite lock is a non recursive rewrite lock, then if we're not focusing on P2 but also uh, P0, P1, then it's like the previous example. But if we want to trigger this that lock, then we need P2. If there is no P2, P1, when they get the B, then they can proceed to A. If you're assessing, uh, detecting any deadlock, you have to go through all, you have to rule out all the possibilities of deadlock. And if we got, if the co codes have P0 and P1, then there's still the possibility of not being a deadlock. And relock is a recursive lock, then obviously this is not a deadlock. A recursive lock will not be blocked by another reader and if they have a P2 then P1 will still have to be a spin uh, this can still get the lock so this is none that lock and the lock that graph can be changed to this and A to B in B to A, there's a ring, and it's not a deadlock. And this one, this is deadlock itself. And the writer will be blocked by reader. The red lock will be blocked by P0. And if it's, it's a ring layout, then we can see that here B to A is a WW. This is not the initial lock. Uh, B is a right lock, and A is also a right lock, and P1. That's the case. So they have the same struct, but the categories is different. One is that lock, and the other is not. So, for the same struct, they might have different categories of lock. Sometimes it is determined as a deadlock, sometimes it, it is not. And well, if it's a Non recursive read lock, then if it's in the RQ context, it's a recursive deadlock. They guarantee, they have to guarantee that the handler can get the lock and exceed ACP. And it's a famous deadlock example. It's pretty special. And this is deadlock example. This is read lock. This is a bit different to the upper right corner it's a recursive deadlock the green bit and the other relock is non-recursive this is a deadlock and deadlock A if P0 get to uh, B and P1 will not get the B because if we have a non-relevant readers then the blocking condition is that the P1 is when it's getting the B, it's a functional uh, reader lock. If they have a writers there, then the writers will first get the lock and then the readers will get the lock. So the P1 read lock won't they won't be uh, able to get the lock. It's a ring struct. So later we're gonna touch upon that. Next, uh, this is a not a deadlock. This we just reverse the sequence, so we can see uh, P zero get A, P one get B, P zero now wants get the B. It is possible. It is accessible. The lock is a recursive 
Relocking. They have a P2 writer, but still they can get the lock. So this is not a deadlock itself. So, locked up. If you're just assessing the ring, then we'll be missing some of the conditions of the deadlock. We need to make several changes first. We have to make sure the existing deadlock is working, locked up is working, and also we have to handle the queue, add up lock, and we have to consider the false positive situation. And if we have a false positive uh, detection tool, then people are not trusting the tool. You can miss some of the dialogue, it's okay, but if you report a false positive result and you might lose the trust from the clients, you have to guarantee the tool is trustworthy, the locked up. Uh, we must rule out the possibility of false positive. So this is very simply about how can we uh, detect um, recursive rewrite lock and we classify it as follows. First we consider um, that we have three categories of rewrite lock. First, R reader, recursive reader, and non-recursive reader and writer. In one dependency we're going to have nine combinations, three times three. So this is a direct sorting up according to the locked up conditions. Four categories, one, shared locks, reader locks, recursive or not, and exclusive locks, writer lock or plain spin locks, and recursive readers, and non-recursive readers and writers. Uh, it's represented by uh, letters S E and S E R N, and recursive reader will be blocked by writers. Non-recursive, no matter if reader uh, or writer locks, will be possibly blocked by other readers and other writers. So, if we summarized it, we got the following graphics: R will be blocked by S, and the others. On the other occasion, they will be blocked. S by S means share, E means exclusive, R means recursive and non-recursive, N means non-recursive. So, we will lock the dependency. We have four categories in this regard. So why? First, SRN, EN, ER, based on previous conditions and definitions, we can easily understand that. And I am saying that for the head of the dependency, we only need to determine whether it's sure or exclusive for the tail. We have to determine whether it's recursive and non-recursive. So we will determine the block on this. When we consider the lock dependency, we are actually focusing on first, if we're to, uh, considering the dependency from A to B, then A will be a lock. Um, what are the conditions it will block? And what other, what other conditions they will be blocked? And B, if we say B can be blocked by the B in BC, and then we can scale up and for the codes in the lower right corner. We can come up with this graphic. From P0, we have a lock dependency SW. Sorry, my mistake. It should be SN. 
A2B dependency and B2A EN dependency and we have to define the two dependencies one is strong dependency uh, we have to see how can we expand the logs dependency guarantee it is a deadlock all the way and how can we search in the log dependency graph and guarantee that it's head and tail have a strong relations a uh, very strong um, dependency see whether we can discover the ring or not or if we can expand it we can, if we can scale up then the dependency from A to B and B to C if it's meeting the following conditions that that means it's a strong dependency and if it's only the last condition from A to B there's from it regardless of what A is and B is a recursive log and from A to C B is a shen log so how can the dependency be transferred? I mean only in the latter case it's not a strong dependency all the other ones they are strong dependencies and we can expand this so I will introduce why we can omit this one because if this kind of situation happens the B is a recursive reader yes from A to B the B is a recursive reader but from B to C this is a shared reader and let's look back on the previous one the recursive reader cannot be blocked by the non-recursive reader so there is not a strong dependency here if you can translate it into codes it means that P1 uh, first chooses A and uh, P2 chooses B. B but he can still choose the B from A to B yeah, you can think about it because the other situations there will be the occurrence of blocking so this is the strong dependency we have we think it is can transfer the relationship of the locks so the that log condition it means that uh, the strong dependency chain forms a circle and uh, the latter example it uh, shows the code for the right one yeah it, it has the deadlock and because it doesn't ha contain the R at all and we can prove that it is also a deadlock yeah p1 get uh, a and p1 get b and p2 get c and the system cannot continue so suppose this uh, deadlock is a non-recursive the reader is a non-recursive one and uh, i have also proved it it's uh, yes we want to prove that there's a kind of a circle a loop that based on this definition we establish a dependency graph if there's a kind of a loop occur happening so it, uh, it equates to the deadlock possibility but it doesn't mean that the deadlock is definitely going to happen because you only need a very special condition to make it happen to make the deadlock tr get triggered but for us uh, we don't allow this possibility of deadlock occur because if that happens then the system will get stuck anytime yes we don't want the deadlock possible we make it equate to the deadlock possibility so suppose we have a strong dependency we can construct construct an example um, in which the deadlock occurs 
and uh, for the reverse, once we can see that the deadlock of possibility means that we will have this condition for circular weight. For the circular weight, we can build a loop gradually. So there must be a strong dependency circle. And uh, this is for the algorithm, and this is for implementation. We change the lock depth uh, codes and uh, also BMS search codes so as to make it to implement the strong dependency. And uh, we have done some tests on it. The code is shown in, in the below. Yeah, you can check it. There is a, one good point is that when the lock depth just appears, it has its own deadlock test. It's called RQ Reader Recursion 1. Yeah, after I have added the algorithm, it is run very well. It proves that, yeah, my implementation algorithm is consistent with uh, the previous thoughts. Yeah, today my topic is a bit complex and abstract, but I hope that there's a two points I want to make. First, how can we expand the log dependency relationship? We use the block condition, the weight condition. So suppose I have two log dependencies. Yeah, it's easy to find them. If you can have this in the code, then you can find it. How can we expand the log? It's an issue. And uh, another thing is that the dependency block condition, yes, one reader can be blocked by another reader. Yes, the other things, they are very not, 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 not complicated. I mean, the algorithm, you can just uh, go and go deep dive yourself. So that's my presentation today. Thank you. So any questions? I have a question because I haven't used the using dot that look that. So is it a, is it a static or dynamic? Yeah, it's a good question. Is a dynamic trace? Yes, it was built dynamically. It's a, yes, so that it won't affect the operation performance. So it will, but its algorithm analysis is static. So is it plugged? Yes, so we still need to install it when we are writing it. So can you go to the previous ones about the calculation of its dependency? I don't remember whether it's page, page three or four. Yes, go backward. Uh, yes. Backwards, if we want to calculate the log dependency, is it done by the decipher machine? So, log depth is detection can be performed by the machine. But when it's realized the Linux kernel is a dynamic, we use the to record what kind of log it gets. And uh, this kind of method is not a dy static. Go back to the dependency graph. So is it a dynamically generated? Yes, in log, it is dynamically generated. So it is, so, yes, the log depth will classify these logs. It won't focus on the instances of these logs. Instead, it focuses on the director's logs. It will categorize it into one type. But 
there's another a CPU's uh, log is another type. Yeah, it has uh, classified it uh, in advance. And uh, we have this kind of a classification method. So after they have written the code, they have already done the classification, and you just need to run it. Yes. So, yeah, that's basically the, the point. So I want to mention that the log step is more to do with the integration. Yes, different systems use the different uh, logs when you want to integrate them, then there is some deadlock, unpredictable happening. So if you, but uh, when you lock up the information, you actually avoid the deadlock. Actually, the deadlock happens more during the integration process. So it's more like a form of the distributor, right? Because as the distributor, dispatcher, or the scheduler can just allocate the resources. And yes, we can avoid this issue happening through the code. Thank you. I'd like to ask you talk that lock step should avoid a false positive. So any instances that there is a lock that lock, but you can't detect it. So yes, for me, yes, we have this, we have this that lock. We cannot not detect the blocked lock. And uh, we, it will think that it doesn't have a deadlock. Yes, you have realized it on the branch. So are you sure about it? Yes, they want to avoid the false positive. Because they will classify these uh, locks. And depending on the ways to classify this, if you give them to the very uh, a few categories. Then, for example, there's a deadlock, the file system. You can regard the file in one file system as a disk. And uh, in this way, if the file system, they will just want to get uh, the lock all the time because it think it's a deadlock. So we, that's why we want to classify it to avoid it being regarded as a deadlock. But in some cases, there is some deadlock, and we want to skip it. But I can't think of a very detailed case, a specific case. So yes, I have a question. So we have this. Uh, Pages right back. It's like a, when we are just uh, want to get the back of it, it will says weight. It's bounded with weight, but the log condition. We can't capture it. You mean the completion weight? Yes, the structure page. They were right back. It will wait for it to be right back and to make it to turn to off. You mean the weight in Linux? If you use a spin knock, and you will have to wait for it, for the weight to be clear to zero. Uh, I'm not sure what you are mentioning. Yes, we have this uh, kind of this progress. In last year, there's a uh, sensor stuff he can detect. There is a dialog with the condition of weight. That is, when you wait, actually you wait with a lock. But for the lock type, it doesn't take into consideration of this case. So it actually wait with a lock. So this weight has a dependency. And uh, this has done up detection method is very great. But uh, it takes a longer time to detect it. If you actually doubt there's kind of a problem, you have just to print the patch again. Yes, then you can find the issue. 
Do you remember the name of the same song? He is a Korean student. I don't. His surname is Park. P A R K. And you can search for Lock Up. You can find him. He's very active in this area. Yes, I'm running out of time. So thank you very much.